you tend to think, well, I'm on a sub panel, how bad could it be? It had oddball fuses. So I didn't notice that they weren't real fuses. It, when it goes off, it goes off like a bomb. It can kill you easily. Nowadays, when they design a, a built an industrial building with 480 volts, they're required for an electrical engineer to do a study of all of the, the fault paths and what current levels can be generated and they, so they can properly size the fusing and so forth, okay? And that's a, uh, so that's a, a very complex process. They have to know everything about every panel, the size of every wire, the length of every wire. It's a big job, but it's now required and panels everywhere in your building are supposed to have a label on it saying what level of arc flash protection you need to work on that panel live. Okay, because it's impossible to troubleshoot if there's no power turned on. You know, you really can't do much if you haven't got the power on. So you say, well, what's the levels? Well, the, the kits that they offer for arc flash protection, they have big, thick Kevlar gloves. They have a, a chest protector that's like a bulletproof vest. They have earmuffs. They have a hard hat and a face shield over top of safety glasses. You know, this is all the stuff you need to keep, and, and a, a jacket, which is Kevlar fireproof, to keep you from being injured. Of course, it's really tough to work when you got these gloves on that are like way thicker than welding gloves, and you're trying to hold a screwdriver, you know, and, and, and that. So, to, so what happens is people work without it. That's what happens because it's so egregious to work on, yeah, stuff like that. And that's what, how people get hurt. But the thing is, you tend to think, well, I'm on a sub panel, how bad could it be? It, and the fact is, is that you're in a worse place than if you were in the main service. So, yes. Um, in the case where I had the, the uh, device blow up on me, the cause of it blowing up was, it had oddball fuses. Somebody taped up pieces of copper pipe to look like fuses. And in the dim light, I didn't notice that they weren't real fuses. And uh, I was in, fortunately, um, I was standing, the, the main breaker in the building was directly behind me in the same room. And I blew the main breaker at 400 amp and put the whole plant down when it happened. Um, and I couldn't see, I, 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 it turns out I couldn't see because I was in a room with no windows and I tripped the power and there was no lights. <laughs> <laughs> the, the big white ball in front of my eyes had nothing to do with me not being able to see. So anyway, so that's, this is, my, my warning to everybody here is to understand that as soon as you see 480 volt power coming into a panel, you want to be really, really, really careful, okay? Because it's not like 240. It, it, when it goes off, it goes off like a bomb and it can it can kill you easily easily so um so like when we're doing this wiring in this little control panel we need to go find the circuit breaker that feeds the machine and turn that off so that we're protected because you don't know there could be a loose wire a loose wire could pop out and 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 strike ground and and cause a hell of a bang you know and that could be uh, before the breaker or after the breaker. You just don't know. You could, so the best thing to do is turn the power off. I've strayed away in years since from putting PLCs in the same panels with the power. I've been building systems where I've had a separate enclosure for the VFD and, and uh, motor starters and stuff. If they're, and uh, so you can open up a panel and work on the PLC and not work, not have to worry about. Uh, the hazards of the higher voltage. So um, anyway, so that's the safety part. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the fusing and so forth that we do within a control panel.